Welcome back. Last summer, the country was gripped by the superhuman achievements of the world's Paralympians. The London Games were meant to inspire a generation and change the way we think about disability. So, what about disabled people who are not superhuman? Are they being cheered on by the crowds or still struggling to get off the starting blocks? In the latest in our series, No Go Britain, The Return, Katie Razzle has been looking at the barriers to work if you are disabled and what's being done to change things. Hello, welcome to When Spinning News, and I'm Thomas. And I'm Andrew. News presenting just one of the jobs being practised by Andrew and Thomas from Wren Spinney Community Special School in Kettering. Ed, Ed. Today, Channel 4 News are here to film... Our visit, not quite a world exclusive on their weekly news show for pupils. Birthdays, though, are a regular feature. Hello, my name's Aidan. The birthdays are for this week. Aidan has an encyclopedic memory for birthdays. And Thursday the 11th of July is Daniel Steele's birthday. His obsession with them made him the perfect fit for birthday correspondent, and he quickly remembered mine. 31st of October on Halloween in the day before Lee, Lee Richley's at work at Benjamin called the Lake District. Now that's a guy that you haven't seen for two years, I know that. Yeah. But you still remember his birthday? Uh, the 1st of November. I first met the Wren Spinney pupils last year selling sweets. Jelly babies. Mint humbugs. Bonbons. Love hearts. These students, who all have severe learning disabilities, are given a unique opportunity, working in their own sweet shop in the heart of their local community. You see. And now they're turning their hand to something else. So is this sectioning, Andrew? With the sweet shop in profit, they've branched out into hairdressing, and newsreader Andrew is loving his new skills. I'd like to make those girls' hair look beautiful. That's what you like doing? Yeah. Hello, I have an appointment at 10.30. These youngsters must leave school soon and it's imperative they learn skills for the future. OK, Dan, I think we're ready to finish the uh, style off. Would you just grab me some serum and some hair OK. It's all about discovering exactly what their talents are and putting them to good use. And that includes never forgetting a birthday. Saturday the 6th of July is Jason Walker's birthday. The opportunity to fulfil dreams and aspirations and to have a job and to have a home and to make relationships um, is really, really important. Our job is to prepare them for what's next. And if by creating these real-life opportunities we can support that um, and promote that, then, yes, that's absolutely critical. There's a real vision here, because it's not just about giving individual youngsters with special needs valuable work experience, but doing so in such a way that it changes the community's views and expectations of what disabled people can achieve. But out of school, in the real world, how well do disabled people fare? Estimates suggest a million who want to work are unemployed, and research published last week said disabled people cite employers' attitudes as a bigger barrier to work than transport. I've got enough rejection letters at home to probably wallpaper my house twice over. Richard Shakespeare has cerebral palsy and worked in banking until he was made redundant in 2009. I applied in a space of just under 12 months for 1,923 uh, jobs. Uh, it was an average of six a day. In a lot of cases, businesses are scared to employ some people with a disability because they don't understand uh, the Equality Act, they don't understand how to make reasonable adjustments. I decided there was a better way out. Knowing the barriers disabled people face getting jobs, Richard decided to do something positive. He now runs his own disability training company to help dispel the myths employers have about hiring disabled people. The thing I would get across to the employers is it's perfectly possible to employ somebody with a disability and in fact it can bring a whole range of benefits to your business. Getting employers to recognise that requires a change in attitudes and that's what WizKids does. The charity's always provided wheelchairs, but now it also arranges work placements for young disabled people. Their new report, Out Tomorrow, shows that for every £1 they invest in them, the state saves up to £49. The latest placement for this WizKid, George, is at RBS. The other placements that I've had, um, one in particular, turned out to me and said at the end they were worried to have me and that, um, that, that after having me they, they, they are convinced that somebody who is willing to work, anybody that's willing to work, would be able to fit in in, in that environment. We're here to bust the myths 
and and show that disabled people are ambitious and capable of working in any, in any environment that interests them and suits them. But it's not just down to individual disabled people to prove themselves. Employers have a duty to treat them fairly. I just think there's a bit of a mystique about employing young disabled people. You know, people think that you might have more sick or you might need more things available or access to buildings, etc. But I actually think what we found at WizKids, we found that working with the employer, working with the young person, actually all of those things disappear and actually lots of the time the young people never want to leave the work placement they want to lock themselves in the loo after two weeks of working for a particular company computer whiz sanjay doesn't have to leave if he doesn't want to after placements through the charity he now has a job i think WizKids kids helped me when i was applying for this job in having this internship under my belt by being able to to say i've worked in teams before i've I've done this before and I've done it in a work environment, not just at university or school. Most of the time, people are scared about going to work, especially young disabled people. They're scared about how they're gonna be treated or you know, how it's gonna end out. But most of the time, people are really helpful and they are willing to help you. Back at Ren Spinney, there's more birthday news. Hello, my name's Aidan. The birthdays are for this week. And the news anchors are sizing up the opposition. And now over to Katie in the Sarnon. It's time for me to put their hairdressing skills to the test. Well, we'll just pop this through the, hair, okay? the plan here is that the actual haircuts are left to the professionals, though some of the pupils have other ideas. I like cutting people's hair. <laughs> have you ever cut someone's hair before? Yeah, I, I, I cut Sinead's hair. Sinead's my sister. What did it look like at the end? Were you a good hairdresser? Did no, she like it? No, uh, she didn't. I was rubbish cutting Sinead's <laughs> hair. Aidan may never be let loose on the scissors, but what's happening here is cutting edge. Out in the real world, what chance is there for these youngsters when they leave the safety of the school environment? I would like to think that for every one of them, the world is their oyster. Uh, it's just our job to prise that shell open just a little. Oh, they do a great job on Katie's hair. Um, Jackie? They can cut my hair any time. And there'll be more no-go Britain tomorrow. John will be live at the Olympic Park with Seb Co and a mixture of Paralympian athletes and disabled people to discuss the legacy of the Paralympics and whether its promises were fulfilled. Katie explains. Remember this? Goal for Great Britain! What did happen to that Paralympic glow? From the stadium to the streets, are disabled people now getting gold-plated service? Coming here is like my medicine. Or has the shine worn off? Why do you think they were treating you like this? Um, because I had terrible problems.